Okay, this lesson is about fermentation. It's a form of anaerobic respiration. So we're just going to have a look at this organism. Now, this is a yeast cell, which it's showing you in the diagram. And we've not done B3 yet, so we've not done these. But if you look at it, you should be able to compare it to the eukaryotic cells that you've been doing. So it's not a plant and it's not an animal cell, but it does have some of the same features. And you can also compare it to plant cells as well. So if you have a look at A, you should be able to have an idea what A is made of, although it's not made of cellulose, that should give you a clue. And then B, you should be able to work out what that is because it needs it for respiration. So we're going to look at fermentation, we're going to look at the word equation and describe the economic importance of it. And we're going to have a look at how that compares with aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So you can see that anaerobic respiration in plant and yeast cells is represented by this equation, which I'll go through in a minute. Aerobic respiration in yeast cells is called fermentation and has economic importance in the manufacture of bread and alcoholic drinks. So we use yeast to produce bread and we use ye um, yeast sorry, to produce wine and spirits. So that's why it has economic importance, because we can sell those to make money. Okay, so... We call it anaerobic respiration if we're biologists. It's also called fermentation, and fermentation is the process by which the chemists know it. So what happens is you have glucose that's being broken down in the absence of oxygen. When glucose is broken down by yeast and plant cells without oxygen, it produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. So ethanol is a form of alcohol. So it'll still produce carbon dioxide and it's still the incomplete breakdown of glucose because there's no oxygen there. And that's why we call it anaerobic respiration in yeast because it's without oxygen. So you should already be thinking of some similarities and differences that it has with aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration in humans. So we can do an experiment to show this in the lab and some of you have seen this at the back of the lab because I've used it, I've, I've put, I think I've got a video somewhere of it doing it which I'll put on for you um, where we used, we trapped yeast in alginate beads and we put it in apple juice and we made alcohol. So if you have a look here you can see that there are two conical flasks filled with a yeast solution. So, well, they both don't have it. This one that we're looking at here the control it's only got glucose in it there are no yeast so it's a control we always use a control in a science experiment as a comparison so in the other one we've got yeast and glucose so by doing one without yeast at all we'll be able to tell that whatever difference happens in this experiment has happened because of the yeast so yeast are living organisms they are a fungus the layer of vegetable oil on the top is to stop any oxygen getting in to the solution because this is an anaerobic respiration or fermentation so it's without oxygen. So if we provide oxygen for the yeast they would respire aerobically so that's what the layer of vegetable oil does, it forms a seal on the top so no air can get in. So what happens in this first one is the yeast will respire anaerobically or ferment and they will convert that glucose into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Now what will happen is pressure will build up in that liquid and the carbon dioxide gas will bubble through the layer of vegetable oil, move up this tube and then it will come out because it will go through the lime water. It will bubble through the lime water. And this is what I've got a video of. Now, as the carbon dioxide goes through the lime water, you should be able to tell me what colour it goes. You should also be able to tell me another indicator that I can put in there and what colour that will go. Okay, so that deals with the gas that's being produced. And then what happens is you'll get alcohol that's left behind. Now, in this one, because there are no yeast, you wouldn't expect anything to happen. You would expect it to stay exactly the same. You wouldn't expect to produce carbon dioxide and ethanol. And so the lime water will stay colourless.
So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to have a look at this experiment, which is very similar to the other one. And then there will be some questions in your notebook asking you about this, which will relate to what I've just been saying. So you might need to replay the video again. And then when you've done that, there is an exam question for you to answer, which we'll go through in the next lesson.